From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. So we keep What up, everybody? Showtime. We're here at the Midtown offices. Both of us, live in the flesh. I'm touching Corey Clark's left arm oh, right okay. now. Okay, all right, just, nice. Just you like that? Right yeah, like that I didn't flex. Normally I flex when not popping people them touch buys? my arms. Not, not right now. Not popping no. them buys today, man? How are you? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Feeling festive I'm here looking at your drink. Christmas tree? Yeah. Really Christmas, pretty? It's really, it's all, I feel like there's so many more bald spots in it than I noticed when I was at the tree farm uh Song it down with my own hands, man. But uh, yeah, she's up there. I wanted to go blue and silver on the tree, but the lady overruled me and went with the typical red and gold. I like that look, though. It's Florida State look, too, by it the is. way. But it, it, I like that. It's, it's nice. It's and gold. So hey, man, I was uh, trotting around town. Oh, first, uh, by the way, I should I should do this. I I, I, was, I heard Cameron on the air the other day. I should probably tell everybody to follow us on social media. Okay. Follow Corey. It's Corey underscore Clark. Correct. And it's Corey with an E, because you yeah. don't want it. Hey, Clark, way. Clark without an E. Yeah, yeah. There we so. go. Uh, follow the show. Wake up, War Chan. It's all one word on Twitter. Although we really don't use it all that much, but we do read it in case you want to. Yeah, you need to get about better stuff. about that. We need to. Do you tweet out? You tweet out from that account or not? Yeah. Well, usually I'll let people know. Hey, we're not having a show. Hey, we are having a show, but I didn't on Monday, and y'all got upset that we didn't do a show on Monday. Like somebody threatened <laughs> to to, to uh, stop their membership. They're like, I mean, like people, dude. People were losing their mind on Monday. All right, it was hey, man. It was so much that we didn't have a show, but we were like the straw that broke the camel's back because everyone thought we'd have an offensive coordinator. Which, by right. the way, as of this taping right now, Florida State intercollegiate football team still does not have an offensive coordinator. Correct. Correct. Again, this is not a judgy sort of tone. I'm just just laying out the facts that at this point they don't have one of those. It'll be all right. I think I'm, I'm I'm over it kind of right now, which I don't know. That's a bad thing. I shouldn't be over it. Like they're gonna they're gonna hire somebody. They're going to play football against Boise State and Jacksonville on September, and then we'll see what's what the future holds from there. Yeah, nobody really knows. Like, I know there's a, a strong – well, I don't know a strong. There's a faction of fans that want Kendall Bryles, and if they don't get him, you're going to be really upset. I think we're in a weird place in this program's history where getting or not getting Kendall Bryles is, a, is considered a big deal. I just You I said mean, that about Hugh Freeze on headlines same thing. the other day, didn't you? Same thing, man. Freeze, where are we as a program? And I say we because I cover this program. I've been covering it for 11 years. I've been following it for 40. Uh, where where you think everything rides on a Hugh Freeze or a Kendall Bryles. Um, so they, the, the point of the matter is they will get someone. If the offensive line can't block, <laughs> it ain't going to matter. And if they don't throw it to some orientary 11 times a game, it ain't going to matter. Yeah. But, you know. I think, again, and I will keep saying this, I think the biggest development is it certainly appears as if Willie Taggart is okay giving it up, giving up the offense. Yeah. So we'll we'll see if that ends up coming to fruition or if they, they miss on Kendall Bryles. And I don't even want to say miss. They just – he doesn't do you, come or we, – yeah. we don't know. We don't know what they're offering. Yeah. We don't know if it's a competitive offer. We don't know if, if they really want him. Um, you know, there might be pushback, blowback from people that matter within the university and within people that give money about bringing a Bryles on board. And if there is, and they say, no, we don't want him as a part of our um, university, I wouldn't call that a swing and a miss. You just move on. I, it's kind of odd to me that your first two choices when you're Florida State are Hugh Free, uh, Freeze and a Bryles, but, you know, you do what you can. I mean, both those guys definitely have shown they can coach. So I get it. But both of those hires, and we don't know, Bryles might be the guy. Um you, you you have some baggage that come with them that you have to explain to people that matter. Like we don't matter. We're yeah. just I mean, we're in the media, it's fine. We can we can rip it or laud it. It it doesn't really matter. But the people that give money matter. And, you know, some uh, some of them might not be fired up about a, a choice like that. But did they not go and interview him in Jacksonville? I mean, Willie, uh, uh, sorry, Hugh Freeze was in Tallahassee last week interviewing for the job. And I'm not a big Swing and miss guy, like you're saying, but they wanted Hugh Freeze, I assume. I mean, yeah, he came to Tallahassee. They I'd... didn't come to talk about just life in general. And, yeah. you know, what should I do on this press conference, Willie? You killed it when you came to Florida State. What should I say when I get but hired so, to Liberty? So they, yeah, but like, so you offer Hugh Freeze whatever you offered him. Let's just guess 1.3. 
and then Jimmy Sexton comes back and says, no, he can't do it for less than two. Right. And you're like, well, we're not doing that. Have fun at Liberty. True. Is that really a swing and a miss? Yeah, I don't – yeah. You know whatever. what I mean? Yeah, and I same thing you. with Bryles. Like, maybe Bryles wants to bring his offensive line coach. Or maybe Bryles wants to bring his dad as an advisor. And you say, no, that can't happen. Again, you can offer a job with, with restrictions, and maybe that stuff has happened. Or maybe you don't want to leave Houston to come to Florida State, as crazy as that sounds. This is all my mater. He's a Texas boy, too. So And you're worried about Florida State. You, you saw those numbers. You, if you've watched any film at all, you might be a little worried about what you're working with. So I get that, too. You might have a better chance at a job, a Power 5 job, staying at Houston. You can get someone good. You can get someone that knows that offense, that's run that offense really well, maybe at a lower level. The Memphis guy, whoever you want to get. A, well, Memphis guy's at Auburn now. That Dillingham he, guy. Oh, did he just leave and yeah, go there? That's yeah. That's who they hired. Um, so, and then Phil Longo from Ole Miss is now at North Carolina. Yeah, which, so Mac Brown finally got an OC. Um, so who knows what that'll, how that will play with Sam Howell. If you want to go play with Mac Brown, man, go play for Mac Brown, buddy. Yeah. You only get to go to college. <laughs> All right, I have no idea what just happened there, everybody. Actually, I do know what happened. The battery on our recording device died. That's my bad. We just haven't used it in a long time. We haven't been together here in the Midtown offices. Again, I'm Jeez, rubbing Corey's go. left like arm. That. Oh, oh, oh you look like at that? the triceps, you son. Like that? Popped your hand right Ronnie, off, didn't it? Ronnie Coleman, Mr. <laughs> o over here, man. Dang. Um, so, I don't know. I'm sure we're probably talking about the offensive coordinator position. Probably. We're in a, probably. They're in a, the program's in a state where they're having to go after guys like Kendall Bryles and Hugh Freeze. I'm sure you probably well, said it's not even there's, that. A, there's a bunch of guys that can run this yeah, that yeah. probably come with less collateral damage. But it's, also, it's in a state where people think that Bryles is the key to this thing turning around. Man, I'm telling you, I know what people think. The key is Willie Taggart. That's what he was hired to do. That, I mean, that's just it. But that, did we not see his stuff this past fall? We did. Um, so is, is, has Willie given up on him running an offense? Did he, was it so bad that he's like, I, I can't do this. We got to bring in somebody else. That's going to run the whole thing. He's going to be the, the general running the whole offense. Or did the administration say, we can't watch this. You need to bring in somebody that, or is Willie kind of hesitant about it? You know, it's all, it's all kind of fascinating, man, because I think, um, and I, and I, I said it on headlines. Like, do we think he's done? Like, say he hires Bryles. Mm-hmm. To run the show completely, it's his offense. It's his like you know he might you know he might have some suggestions like Bowden did and not yeah, but listen, we're going for it on fourth down here. You know we're going for that. It. Yeah. But the day to day of the game planning and the play calling is all Bryles or Mister X, whoever is Willie never going to be an offensive coordinator then again? Like is yeah. that's a, that seems like a line in the sand where you're like, all right, I'm I'm deciding right now what's best for my career is not to do this anymore. No, because I mean, haven't we said it that we think? I mean, again, this is I don't I don't for sure think this, but I think one theory you can float out there is the administration angle in terms of hey, you know, this did not go well at all. Uh, the only way that we can probably get this thing back on track is that if we just get let's get a quick fix in here. No matter what we need to do, what we need to spend, what sort of hit we need to take from a PR standpoint, we need it. We believe in you, Willie, but let's get a quick fix in here. Let's get this thing off the ground. Does it seem and then desperate? He can re- Yes, because you you hired a guy like Walt Bell that was fairly unproven. Right. You only spent six hundred thousand dollars or right. seven hundred, and now you're talking. All right, we're cool with seven figures. We're cool with maybe like four or five million dollars guaranteed. And you're, and you're cool leaders. with somebody else running your show. Yeah. Like after it, it that's what. And again, not to just parrot what we did, what we said on headlines, but I don't want to present this as I'm saying something. Yeah, original. Be who you are. Yeah, you're. But you're I don't. I mean, I don't want people that listen to both be like, yeah, Corey, we already know you said. Don't present it as like this is a new thought. But, you know, we talked about how it seems just kind of desperate that you everything changed over a three-month stretch. In August, Willie's the play, Carl. I call the plays. This is Bristled my offense. at us. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling the plays. I'm calling the plays. I'm calling the plays. And then yeah. three months later, after an abomination of a season, all of a sudden you're gonna you're looking at a Hugh Freeze or a, or a Bryles to come in, and, and they're not coming in unless they're given the keys. They're given everything. That just seems like a really dramatic about face. Well, you, either you, you, you know use what I mean? the word abomination, of course. Yeah, that's a but that's, and that, that was Iris' point. Is like it wasn't just bad; it was, it was the way it looked. And yeah. I get that it was so bad that maybe you do need a dramatic change of events. It's just, you know, I, I would have thought they understand what he was up against. I know nobody expected five and seven, and they d- certainly didn't expect 
21 points a game or whatever they ended up averaging in all the blowout losses. But they knew it, was, it wasn't going to be overnight. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that they struggled in year one wasn't necessarily a surprise. It was to us, I guess, to be that bad. Yeah, of course, yeah. to be that bad. But it wasn't a surprise that they lost games. But then all of a sudden it's like his whole – what was the vision? Did the vision just get – whatever his vision was for this program and the way he was going to run it, did it completely get sideswiped by this season? Did he look in the mirror and say things need to change? We can't do this again. I let this I program down. I find it hard down. to believe. A guy that, that's made it this far, has achieved his dream job doing things by – on doing it his way, uh, putting everything on his shoulders, calling plays all these years. I find it hard to believe that one – Bat- and listen, for as bad, as bad years. If exactly, for as bad as this year was, he was two and ten first year at Western Kentucky, yeah. two and ten first year at USF. It's different here, obviously. That's the thing. I find it hard to believe that Willie's going to be shook after this season and be like, "Dang, I got to blow this whole thing up." That's why I feel like it's an administrative yeah, maybe the sort administration of thing. is shook. Um, yeah, because yeah. again, I mean, how many? I haven't gone back and look at this, but you think of, a, of of the Gators, right? They go four and eight in twenty thirteen, and then what? Three years later, they're they're back in the same sort of boat where. You know they don't get the thing off the ground. They're they're not making bowl games yeah. again. And I, and I know they made a coaching change, but when like when these things happen, when these great programs, when the Nebraskas, when the Miamis, when they crater, um, it 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 seems like it just it happens, right? It's not a, a gradual sort of decline, right? And I think maybe that's part of it. It's like all right, we see what's happening. Like we need to jumpstart this now. We can't we can't be calm and and trust the process right now to work out of it. We can believe in Willie still. Let's get these this coaching staff in here that can kickstart this and do smoke and mirrors and get us a seven or eight wins. Yeah. And then you can start recruiting the guys that you need that have the character, that have the the desire and all the intangible stuff that you talk about. But in the meantime, we love you so, Willie. But man, if, if we're going to keep you here, I mean, if you know, for the best health of everybody involved in here, let's get this the, these kind of guys in right now just to make it good for now. That's I mean, that's that's a theory. Yeah. Part of it, I, I kind of believe, because I'm saying it out loud, and I and I convince myself about a lot of things too many times. Um, but it, again, it's it's hard to imagine a guy like Willie Taggart who's achieved his dream job, doing things on his own, trusting his his gut, his instincts, making really um, you know huge moves in the middle of seasons, do, do the way he did the Gulf Coast offense in the middle of a season. Yeah. Um, for him to to sit back and then be like, all right, I'll take my hands off of this, and I, I'm not gonna I'm I'm, I'm not gonna be have my hands on my baby on this. That's to me. I find it hard to believe that he came to some sort of realization after as bad of a season as it's. But he was. might have because again he has done that in the past. He has made dramatic changes in season, um, so maybe he decided what was best for the program for it was for him not to be spread that thin, and um, you know he didn't work well with the coordinator, obviously, um, and you know let somebody who has a vision for this offense and the way it's supposed to be run and has lived and breathed offense for a decade, like the Bryles guy has or whoever else they hire will be somebody that's been in this offense for a long time. Let him just live, breathe offense because you're a head coach and you got to worry about more than just play calling on Saturdays. But he's maybe, been a head coach for like eight maybe years that's what he's prior. Thinking. It's not like he's had new responsibilities. I just don't know if maybe it's just a, this is just a bigger – I mean, Florida State is just a, a bigger headache than, than anything. And it's it's got obviously – the love that you'll get from Florida State when you're doing well will be like any other love you've ever had in your life. But when it's going to go bad here, it's it's not going to be like anything you endured in Bowling Green, Kentucky, or Tampa, Florida. Yeah, or Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, um, for sure. So, you know that that's what to me is so fascinating about it is is whose decision is this? And you know, say they don't get Bryles, do they then go to a um, I don't know an understudy yeah. like Walt Bell kind of was, as somebody that's not proven? and have them learn under Taggart, but Taggart's still calling the offense. Like, we all, we, you know, we, none and of us. And then you were, hope you, what, you get a transfer quarterback and, like, two Juco yeah, man, linemen I, and a grad transfer lineman maybe, and then. You could spend that million dollars better elsewhere is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You get three linemen and Jalen Hurts, you can get that for a million dollars. I don't mean to interrupt you on that, that previous thought, but I, I really think it, to fix this quickly – the the easiest most like expedited move of like expedi- expediency is get a good transfer quarterback that yeah. that can run crazy because for as good as Kendall Browse is and I didn't even realize he was at Houston earlier in the season but I remember watching them on a Thursday night I think maybe even the game when the whole Ed, Ed Oliver wearing the jacket fiasco happened I remember watching their quarterback and I'm like you know what I'm like if if Willie had that kid probably you're going to a bowl this year in Tallahassee like he just need he needs a dynamic 
Vic Manzel running. I don't even say them because they're they're Vic's first ahead, round. They're, but, well, they're first yeah. round draft picks. He doesn't need a first round draft pick. Quentin Flowers, I don't think, is even in the NFL. Even got a sniff in the NFL. Yeah, you need a Quentin Flowers. He needs a guy that can yeah. play backyard football really well and start running around doing crazy things with his legs. That's the easiest thing I think to to, to jumpstart things. And you don't have to put your name. You don't have to attach your university to an Art Briles or a Hugh Freeze. Um, I, I wonder, and we're not talking about that as much, which doesn't necessarily mean Willie isn't focusing on it as much. But I do wonder if that's something that he's exploring maybe even more so than, than getting an offensive coordinator here. Just get get a guy that can run around, man. That can yeah, you're gonna complete fifty four percent of your passes, whatever. But are you gonna run for eighty five yards a game? You yeah. know, maybe get three first downs a game. Uh, Ten on, touchdowns, on nine yeah. touchdowns. That yeah. changed the complexion of an entire season. And so. all of a sudden, Cam Akers is running for 1,400, 1,600 yards. I yeah. mean, I do think that happens if you have a mobile quarterback. Yeah, yeah. man. So the- Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.